I like reading the most because it really just gives me different worlds. An opportunity for a child to maybe see themselves in the story. What was presented in schools was an opening my eyes to things that were really relating. My favorite books with me. is learning a language. A child's first exposure maybe to this other culture. Yeah, this every is a great book. Have diverse books in their home. Having an array of children's literature that had diverse experiences, I feel like would be very beneficial. Diverse books here would be an opportunity to get, you know, just anybody to read. And with a diverse selection of books, a diverse selection of people can come over and think, hey, this book seems like something I would be interested in. If a teacher wants to really engage their students and get them to a place where they're excited about reading and learning, the best thing that they can do is bring books that reflect their, their kids that they're teaching. It's kind of hard to go along with something that, you know, not necessarily you don't know about, but something that you can't connect with. Because if you can't connect with it, there's really no interest. Because when somebody connects with something, you know, they might not just see themselves in it, but they feel the book, they feel the characters, they feel the atmosphere the authors created within these pages, you know, they enjoy it. They can see themselves there, they can picture it in their minds, and it's just a fun experience. Every kid should have diverse books in their home. Um, and if they do come from a diverse background, hopefully that can mirror and reflect a part of their life um, or a part of another kid's life that, that maybe looks like them or that they know in their, in their classroom. And the same goes for, for being a window for kids that, that maybe are in more maybe white communities that don't get to, to experience a world with classrooms full of diverse kids. I know that um, personally, like my son was a four and in Head Start and he was, you know, creating stories with his Head Start teacher about, you know, him jumping on a waffle trampoline and just like that creativity comes from, from books and things kids hear um, and it just really just like kids can just take it from there, from, from reading and, and being like, oh, this kid's like me. I really try to get books that reflect him, whether it's his Latino side or his black side. Um, and I also try to get books about him being mixed and what a different type of kid he is. When he comes home, it's really important for me to nurture um, the good in him and to nurture the fact that he, he has great self-esteem and, and really um, that's a great time to bring a book out and read about the differences 
that make him a great human being. Um, and those are the really the times that I use books to, to teach him about who he is and, and how strong he is and, and how great it is that he is completely mixed with all these different parts of, of being him. Like you had mentioned, the, the window, it gives us like a viewpoint uh, to experience something that we've never came across before. I think both are very powerful and hold a lot of imagery and can help us greater understand the way that we can incorporate different um, materials into our own lives. It's really important to me to look at where stories or even movies incorporate uh, diverse characters, but also where identities intersect. So it's not just that we have books that are about um, black people, Asian people, white people, and that nature. It's about where does race and ethnicity meet sexuality and gender, and how can we bring all these stories together. I know that oftentimes I think about my own multiple identities and were to think if someone were to categorize me as only an Asian American, how much of my identity is left out when you only look at that one specific part of me and that's all that becomes who I am. I definitely think that books can be used as a very progressive tool for teachers to be able to understand their students. At the same time, I do know that it's hard because certain books will give a very one-sided representation of a certain culture or a certain person with a certain experience. And I, w I would just caution that in incorporating books into an education uh, for students, it would have to cover kind of a wide variety of experiences. And you wouldn't just want one book that is supposed to be the token book for all um, queer students or all um, students of color. We read a book that's beautiful and it's called I Am Mixed um, and he, he loves that book. It just, I think it's a, it's a really good description of, of all the good things that he is. These books over here represent our bundles that we give to Spanish-speaking kids. So in the group of 14 books, we include at least four that are in Spanish um, so that the whole family can enjoy reading them together. Because about 40% of the kids that we serve come from Spanish-speaking families. It's a pretty good area to bring in some, um, some diverse books because um, whether the classroom is completely white or not, um, they're going to be interacting with kids from different cultures. And it's great to be like, oh, you know, these are the similarities that bring us together. Um, and not just like that's the different kid that I really don't have anything in common with. Because I speak Spanish with my dad and English with my mom, so that... And sometimes we read bilingual books, like one page yeah. and, uh, in English and one page... Yeah, sometimes... My mom reads her in English and one, I read one. another page in, in Spanish. Yes, oh. I like that. You know, translated books are okay, but we prefer books that are in the native language by um, the... Uh, the authors are, you know, native speaker of that language because they don't also bring 
just the intricacies of the languages, but also the um, cultural aspects, the um, humor, the uh, the words, the phrases from the other language, and so that's that's we need to share. Cervantes. So this guy is an important guy for the Spanish speakers. It's not just about taking a book and having it translated into Spanish. That doesn't make it culturally relevant because the white characters are all still white, the references are all still based on our dominant white culture. Um, so for a book in Spanish or to meet the, our Spanish-speaking families, they want books that have their cultural references and, and characters that reflect um, you know, their children and their characters. I think if a teacher wants to really engage their students and get them to a place where they're excited about reading and learning, the best thing that they can do is bring books that reflect their, their kids that they're teaching. Um, I think that's like an instant hook, whether it's language or the colors or a word. I mean, even if a kid's reading a book and, it, and it's like tortilla and a kid's like, oh, I eat that at home, wow. Um, they feel more connected with the teacher, with the story, um, and everybody gets to learn. I think for people from communities of color, it's so important to read books that reflect you, um, your culture, and for people that are not um, people of color, I feel like that's just as equally as important because they get to see um, books of people characterized that they're going to school with or that they're friends with. Um, the world is a diverse place, so we should be reflecting that in the books that our kids are reading. It's just so vital for teachers to, to have a passion to look for books that reflect the kids that they're teaching. Um, and not just the kids that they're teaching, but just to think about things as a, as a way to teach kids about the world. Um, because kids learn this way, and if you get one kid excited about reading, um, because they identify with a story that was read in a classroom, it can make all the difference in that child's life.